with your host, Jaden Miller. Good day and welcome to Think About It with Jaden Miller. Today is April 16th, 2023. Please check out my website at www.jadenmiller.com. That is J-A-Y-D-E-N-M-I-L-L-E-R.com. Please like, share, and subscribe on my YouTube channel and like, comment, and follow on your favorite podcast platform. You can find me on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Spreaker, Google Podcasts, CastBox, Good Pods, Amazon, Podvine, and so many others. Um, it again is good to uh, to join you guys again. I've been away from my podcast for a few weeks, but I am back and wanted to talk today a little bit about some of the things that have been going on in the United States. And one of those things specifically is the what seems to be increasing number of mass shootings in the United States. Um, and specifically this last week has been a bit, actually these last couple of weeks have been really, really sad weeks, um, at least on a national scale and certainly uh, locally for those areas that have suffered uh, from mass shootings. As of today, April 16th, there have been 163 mass shootings in the United States. 163. Um, that is quite a large amount. Um, last week in Nashville, Tennessee, three children and three adults were killed when a uh, uh, individual went into her former school and uh, caused a great deal of havoc uh, there. Um, earlier last week, April 10th, there was a shooting in Louisville, Kentucky at a bank, uh, which caused disaster for so many families. Uh, and then not only did and the, the bank mass shooting happen in Louisville, Kentucky, but just yesterday in Louisville, Kentucky, there was another mass shooting. So if we look at just yesterday, April 15th in the United States of America, there were nine mass shootings just yesterday. Uh, they happened in New Jersey and in Michigan, Alabama, Minnesota, Kentucky, California, New Jersey, Hawaii, Arizona. OK, here in my state of Arizona, there were four people that were injured uh, in a mass shooting. Folks, what are we to do about this? You know, there's a great deal of research. There's a great deal of politics, but we never seem to come up with a good answer. In each of the last three years, there have been more than 600 mass shootings, almost two a day on average. Now, while the United States does not have a single definition for mass shootings, the Gun Violence Archive, and that's the research database that I've been utilizing in order to help me, you know, keep track of these, um, it defines a mass shooting as an incident in which four or more people are injured or killed. Their figures include shootings that happen in homes and in public places. Now, if we go back in time, let's just go back to 2014. In 2014, there were 273 mass shootings in the United States. In 2015, 336. In 2016, 383. Now, in 2017, we saw a decline to 348, another decline in 2018 to 336, but then they started to go back up again. And in 2019, we had 417. 2020, we had 610. In 2021, there were 690 mass shootings in the United States. Last year in 2023, I'm sorry, last year in 2022, there were 647. Okay. And as I mentioned, as of uh, 
yesterday, there were 163 thus far uh, in the United States. What are we to do, folks? What are we to do? Some of the worst mass shootings since 1991. The worst was in Las Vegas, Nevada in 2017. Uh, And then next to that would have been in Orlando, Florida in 2016. Uh, The Virginia Tech uh, shooting at at the university down there in Virginia in 2017. That comes in third. And then Sandy Hook uh, in Connecticut in 2012 came in fourth. Um, and as we look down and go back in time, we see that there were a number of them in Sutherland Springs. Of course, there was Uvalde last year, the horrendous one at Parkland, Florida at the uh, high school. Uh, and then when we really started talking about mass shootings was in Columbine, Colorado back in 1999. Okay. Um, What's going on in the United States? What's happening? Now, what you should know is that gun-related deaths are broken down not necessarily by mass shootings. Uh, Now, mass shootings and gun murders or homicides generally garner much more media attention. But when we look just at gun-related deaths, uh, the majority of them are by suicide. 26,328 people in 2021 died by suicide uh, using a handgun. So, you know, as we look over time, you know, we have to continue to ask this question, you know, is it the guns? Is it the people that own the guns? When we look at other countries and we see firearms, deaths, we take into consideration the number of firearms by residents. So how many guns are there in the United States? While calculating the number of guns in private hands around the world is difficult, the latest figures from the Small Arms Survey, which is a Swiss-based research project, they estimated that there were 390 million guns in circulation in the United States in 2018. The U.S. ratio of 120.5 firearms per 100 residents is up from 88 per 100 in 2011. And this far surpasses that of other countries around the world. So uh, coming in second to the United States, and again, we're talking about the ratio of firearms per 100 residents, Yemen comes next at 52.8, Serbia at 39.1, Montenegro at 39.1, Uruguay at 34.7, and then Canada at 34.7. Much lower number of firearms per 100 residents. Okay, so then what are we to do? Well, a majority of Americans are in favor of gun control. We, we need to make sure that that's known, okay? Um, 57% of Americans surveyed said they wanted stricter gun laws, okay? 30, uh, 32% said the law should remain the same, okay? Some even feel that they should be less strict. What do you think? This is Think About It with Jaden Miller. What do you think? Please like, share, and subscribe on my YouTube channel and like, comment, and follow on your favorite podcast platform. Don't forget to check out my website at www.jadenmiller.com. Um, what do you think, you know, about gun laws? Are they too weak? Um, are they too strong? Uh, Should we consider the Second Amendment, which, you know, has been debated back and forth so many times? This issue of of guns and gun laws and the strictness of them um, is extremely divisive and it always seems to fall along political party lines. So Democrats are nearly unanimous in their support for stricter gun laws. Okay, with nearly 91% in favor of stricter laws. 
only 24% of Republicans uh, support stricter gun laws and 45% of independent voters support stricter gun laws. Now, some states have taken steps to ban or strictly regulate ownership of assault weapons. Laws vary by state, but California, for example, has banned ownership of assault weapons with limited exceptions. So there are a few states that regulate but do not ban assault weapons. That would be Minnesota, Virginia, Washington State. Uh, And then there are states with assault weapons bans. That would include California, Connecticut, Delaware, Hawaii, Illinois, Maryland, Massachusetts, New Jersey, New York, Washington, D.C. And so the majority of the country, however, does not have assault weapons restrictions, okay? Um, We all know that the NRA, the National Rifle Association, remains the most powerful gun lobby in the United States uh, with a substantial budget to influence members of Congress on gun policy. Of course, they oppose gun control. We can ask the question why, but I think we know the answer to that question. Um, A number of states have also gone very far to largely eliminate restrictions on who can carry a gun. For example, Texas leads the way in. Its governor, Greg Abbott, signed into law back in 2021 a permitless carry bill that allows the state's residents to carry handguns without a license or training. It's the same way here in Arizona. Uh, Last year in 2022, Georgia became the 25th in the nation to eliminate the need for a permit permit to conceal or openly carry a firearm. The law means any citizen of that state has the right to carry a firearm without a license or a permit. What do you think? Now, when we talk about the research, you know, what works? What works? Um, And the research is so limited that there really hasn't been any really great research to help find a method to limit um, the gun violence in the United States. You know, and, and, and as I think back to when I was young, handguns, weapons, you know, violence has been a part of American culture. We, I don't think we can really argue that. Um, we've had... Even our movies, you know, and our television shows. Now, I grew up in the 70s uh, and the 80s. And so there were lots of cop shows, uh, which were great. Uh, but there was lots of violence in them. The, the, the cops were always chasing the bad guys. And nine times out of ten, the cops would always get them. OK, but there were still violence. Um, if we look back at some of the Westerns, you know, and even though, you know, the depictions weren't violent, there was still this resonating feeling behind it. I mean, you know, if you watch shows like Bonanza and Gunsmoke, you know, uh, The Rifleman, they didn't show blood. You know, no one got shot in the head or anything like that. Usually, you know, if there was a gunfight, somebody got shot, they clutched and then they fell to the ground, you know. Um, but that was it. But the violence was still prevalent there, you know. Um So many people grew up and I would suppose that many of our congressmen and women and and politicians grew up during that time where violence was a little bit more acceptable. Okay, Um, and it's not so much acceptable on television today. Um, So I think we have this whole dichotomy of people who, you know, are opposed, you know, meaning a lot more younger people, you know, maybe those under the age of 35. And then you have those that maybe are above the age of 35 that find it to be more acceptable and maybe find it to just be a part of American culture. Um, But What happens on television and in the movies is so much more different than what happens in real life because the impact on society and the impact on people's lives 
is so, so much prevailing. Okay. All right. We can watch a TV show and be done with it, but we can't witness a violent act and just be done with it. Okay. We're left with the scars of that. We're left with the trauma that comes from that. Uh, And it can be devastating. Okay. Now, as I look over my whole experiences in law enforcement and 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 watching violence and seeing violence and 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 especially where I'm from in Chicago, you know, back in 1974, I remember um, Chicago led the nation with, I believe, 900 and something murders, uh, and this trend went down. The trend for for having this high amount of murder started to decrease, but then it started to rebound and increase in the 1990s. And I believe that crack cocaine, the drug trade had a lot to do, gang activity had a lot to do with that. Okay. So this type of violence, this gun violence has seen ebbs and flows throughout the United States, but we don't really talk so much about, you know, that type of gun violence anymore, okay? Or at least not as much. We are really, really focused on these mass shootings. Now, these mass shootings can involve, you know, the drug trade and gang activities and that kind of thing. But the difference is, is that, you know, they now have this impact on a whole wide ranging amount of other people, okay? So, you know, when gangs would have a fight amongst each other. They would fight amongst each other, you know? They would go into one rival gang neighborhood or, you know, but now they're meeting at malls or they're doing it at gas stations. They're doing it out in public places where the probability for innocent bystanders or innocent people to get hit, to get injured, to die increases, okay? Okay? Because they're now less caring about who is impacted. Really, really sad. So researchers have found that there are two approaches that might work, okay, Uh, to limit mass shootings, okay? One was a requirement that a gun purchaser go through a licensing process. Um, A licensing process requires someone to directly apply and engage with law enforcement. Sometimes there may be safety trainings and other requirements. All right. And then another approach that seems to reduce deaths from mass shootings was state bans on buying large capacity magazines or ammunition. Uh, or ammunition feeding devices for semi-automatic weapons. Now, back in the 1990s, there was a uh, a ban on buying large capacity magazines. That federal law then expired and it was not renewed. Okay. <clears throat> um, so well, some would say that it makes intuitive sense uh, to limit a shooter you know, or a person from buying many bullets in a short amount of time, okay? Um, So that's the premise behind, you know, banning, you know, the purchase of large capacity magazines. Um, What about background checks or having police at schools? Are those some methods that can help the mass shootings or to decrease the mass shootings? Um, Well, there's very little research that says that having police officers on site or at a school or, you know, limits mass shootings. Um, You know, I think it's great to have a police presence at certain places. Uh, I've never, I, I, I just have never been one to believe that having police officers, you know, at schools which are supposed to be our centers of academia and learning, um, 
was was a good thing. Now, that's not to say that I don't believe that we should have police resource officers and that kind of thing, you know, because I think those are good. I just don't think that there should be this mass presence at schools, you know, unless the schools are having some real serious problems with gang activity and violence, you know. But for the most part, schools should be safe zones. And I think we as American people should instill in our kids and in society that, you know, there are just certain places we just don't engage in ugly types of behavior. You know, there the, the rise of mass shootings at churches is alarming, alarming, you know, and religion should still be one of those uh, areas that still should have that sanctity, you know, and that respect. But now people go into churches and kill. People go into schools and then they don't kill just adults, but they kill children. The Uvalde, Texas school shooting was so horrific, so horrific. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do about the continuous mass shootings in the United States? This is Think About It with Jaden Miller. What, uh, what do you think? What do you think? What can we do? Should we ban weapons in the United States? Can that actually happen? Um, or will the Second Amendment proponents come out in mass force? Um, you know, should we, um, us, uh, like I mentioned earlier, should we ban the purchase of of, of assault weapons uh, and ban the buying of large capacity magazines? You know, would that be helpful? Um, should we look at nations across the world and see what is it that they're doing? Um, your larger uh, countries don't have the problems that the United States does. Um, is it historical? Is it because this country was founded on violence, you know? But remember, it wasn't founded on a bad type of violence. It was founded based upon the fact that America wanted to be free from the, the tyranny of Great Britain, okay? Uh, however, the after effects, you know, um, certainly, you know, the violence associated with, you know, rounding up people from other places and bringing them to this country to work certainly was not a great thing. And that produced another type of violence. And so... Um, we have a lot to think about. And what really concerns me as a nation, we have so many great thinkers and so many great institutions of higher learning. But yet this is still a problem that we can't seem to tackle. All right. I think what really concerns me is when people are killed, politicians, instead of taking the time to reflect and to pay homage to the victims. Um, they want to come out and support their position on guns. I think that's just so poor in taste. Um, we don't give people the proper opportunity to mourn. And we as a nation, you know, don't mourn. We should mourn when six-year-olds and seven-year-olds and eight-year-olds are killed in our schools. And we don't. We have become so desensitized to violence. Uh, and that's what really makes it so, so troubling. All right. Tell me what you think. What do you think about this increasing amount of mass shootings in the United States? Nine mass shootings in the United States just yesterday on April 15th. All right. Please check out my website at www.jadenmiller.com. Please like, share, and subscribe on my YouTube channel and like, comment, and follow on your favorite podcast platform. Again, you can find me on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Spreaker, Google Podcast, CastBox, iHeartRadio, Good Pods, Podvine, Amazon, and so many more. Feel free to shoot me a message. Tell me what you think. Tell me what we can do to limit the amount of mass shootings 
in the United States and decrease the number of tragic incidents and trauma that our children have to continue to live with as they themselves become adults. See you guys next time. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to Think About It with Jaden Miller. Don't forget to like and subscribe to his YouTube channel and like and follow on your favorite podcast platform.